G'day folks, just a little bit of an update on a small jobby I'm doing today and that is installing a moving bed bioreactor using this old reservoir we've used for hydroponics and wet pots and all sorts of stuff and trying to fit it in just beside the radial flow settler here but what that means is I need to do a bit of moving around I need to uh, move the radial flow settler over I'll probably take it all the way up to um, that join there so what's that about 100 mil or 4 inches just to give me a little bit more room on this side here. That also means I need to adjust my little bridge siphon here that I use to partially empty the um, settler when it comes to cleaning. So the media I'm going to be using is this um, PEO3, which is, uh, I think it's a K2 in the coldness style. Um, different companies, different names. So it's the five spoke media. And I know that one liter of that is enough to look after the waste of one fish. Uh, when it grows to 500 grams, taking into account the amount of feed that I give it. Uh, speaking of the fish, uh, they're happily in here just cruising around. They're a little bit crook if you've seen um, a recent clip. We do have some air in there over the back, so it's giving them enough O2 at the moment. Um, so what I might do is um, set up the camera and yeah, we'll just walk through the little adjustments I'm making in here. So to begin with, we're going to have to um, move this over. And I found the easiest way to get this um, pipe work to slide through a uni seal is to lubricate it a bit. Generally water will work. I think I might actually just take off some pipe work from this side as well. Watch I don't spill my coffee. Now I'm going to try and manhandle this through, um, keeping in mind that I do have a little bit of a leak up here. Uh, when there's no water in this and it gets moved around a bit, um, the uh, the little seal up here does tend to leak, not the uni seal, the pipe join. So that's something I'll have to address down the line. But for now, we're going to try and awkwardly um, get this pipe further through the uni seal. Looks like rocking it backwards and forwards does the best job. There we go, I think we got it there. So I'm just going to move these bricks around a bit. There we go, and just leave this little space here for the pump. There we go, everything seems to fit okay there at the moment. Pretty happy with that. Now my main concern is to get this um, back and up and running for the fish. Uh, there is a few other modifications I'd like to do on this radial flow settler, but I'll do them at a later date. So I'm just eyeballing where this needs to be cut, and I would say around about there. Generally it's about, at least with um, the fittings I'm using, 30 mil from the edge of the fitting to the actually where the end of the pipe um, pushes into the fitting. Uh, different brands will be different amounts, but that looks pretty close to 30 mil there. And that's pretty much all the center, so I need to make my cut there. This is going to be fun. So I'm just using a beach towel down the bottom there to collect as many shavings as I can and my handy dandy little um, silky saw here to make the cut. So a little bit skew with, but not too bad. Let's try and take off all this plastic burr material. Yeah, I can't feel any more up the pipe, so I think I got it all. So just getting those last few bits of plastic out of the bottom, excuse the ball patch. Pop on the riser. That looks pretty good, sweet as. So I really want to get the water flowing for those little fellas down in there. Now uh, the water temp's nice and low today, so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, before I get it flowing through the filter again though, or settler, um, I just want to change out this fitting here. The um, bridge siphon that empties the majority of the filter into the sump, so I don't waste all the water when I clean it. There we go. So what I'm going to do is put this end into the filter. Let's give it a little bit of uh, lubrication first. I just want it through enough that we can put a fitting on the other side. There we go. So what I'm going to do is just wrap a little bit of Teflon tape around this, just to make sure it gives it a nice seal. Uh, the reason this needs um, to be a nice tight seal is um, if it's not airtight, uh, air can get in behind this fitting and break the siphon while I'm trying to empty out the um, settler. And I might actually be able to um, take this fitting back out towards the sump just a little bit. There we go. 
So now I'm just wrapping some tape around the other fitting as well on the outside just to make sure we have a nice good seal. And on it goes. That all looks honky dory. Now we can turn the valve back on. Let's throw the top back on. Let's see how centered we are. Sorry, camera. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty close to the center of the stilling well. So we're ready to drill out the holes for the moving bed bioreactor. Um, I've actually was going to put the inlet on this side here but then the outlet would have to be where one of these handles is to go into the sump tank so I've, I've just turned it around, whoops, around that way and then the outlet will go a little bit further down on this side over here. Now to work out how high I need to drill, I pretty much all just used a tape measure on the ground, uh, halfway up the height of this pipe, uh, moved it over here and we're all ready to go. Now I will be using a uni seal mainly because they're nice and easy to use, they're cheap. Uh, with a bulkhead fitting you need the bulkhead and then the threaded adapters um, to go either end to make them nice and watertight. Uh, with the uni seal I can just pop this in, push the pipe through and then just push couplings on, make sure they're well sealed and away we go. A lot cheaper, a lot easier to use. Not everyone's a fan of them but I like them, in fact I like them so much I sell them so you can check out that little link up there if you're in Australia. And um, yeah, we'll have a look at helping you out with a couple of uni seals. But yeah, I'll pull this down, put it on the ground, and um, we'll drill these holes and get everything set up. Now with these hole saws, I actually like to run a pilot hole through first because you can't always find your mark um, from the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off going forward with the drill, and then I'm going to reverse it and the backward motion is enough to cut through plastic and do take it a little bit slow don't apply a lot of pressure or you can crack some plastics there we go also pays to do it on a tarp or something which i forgot to do today just so you can clean up all your little bits of plastic now for the exit one thing i like to do after i drill the holes is just go around and clean them up with a sharp blade or a deburra because you don't want any of this swarf getting in between the uni seal and the drum because it can create leaks so just give it a quick tidy up so another thing you've probably noticed is this isn't a flat wall uh, there's a little bit of a divot here not a problem at all with the uni seal because it's thick enough that it will create a seal on that um, <laughs> uh, good luck trying to get a bulkhead to do the same thing uh, because this is such an old container what I'm going to do is brace the inside just with this bit of um, timber hopefully to um, stop it from cracking I don't think we'll have any problems if we take it nice and easy um, what I've done is I've also created a bit of a chamfer on the edge there just to help get the uni uh, the pipe into the uni seal give this a bit of a wash down and throw the ball for the dog there you go Lizzie <laughs> so just try and do this carefully so I don't really, really want to um, break the drum. These can be a bit hard to start off, but we've got it in there. I think that's about 30 millimeters. And um, yeah, there we go. Oh, I didn't mention, there you go, Lizzie. I didn't mention I've got 30 mil or roughly an inch and a quarter on each side of the uni seal, um, just so I can put the fittings on. Now on to the uh, drain section. Again, we're just going to brace it on the inside, pop the uni seal in, and also lube up the pipework. Now this one is a little bit longer on this side because it's got to flow into the sump, and I only need about 30 mil again on the inside. So hopefully this one will go in as easy as the other one. There we go. A lot easier in fact. Let's check it on the inside a little bit further and there we go so rightio folks we have the uni seals through I've got my little rubber coupling on here that I'm going to use to put on the pipe connected to the radial flow settler that just means if we ever want to remove this it's easy enough just undo a few screws and away we go and also gives us a little bit of flexibility in our joint here in case they don't match up perfectly so what I have to do now is bypass the um, drain pipe here 
from the radial flow filter. Another good reason to have this little bridge siphon here. Now this water through here will slowly stop. And what I have to do is I have to uh, remove this pipework in here and install um, this section, which I've got around back to front. Install this in there. Just move this for now. There we go. It's coming out easier than I thought. Now we need to insert this one. Just give it a little bit of lubrication with the water in there. There we go. There. You can see how much easier it is to push through with a stiffer plastic. And pop the lid back on. Now to get the cuff on it. Shouldn't be too hard. Might help just to put that down as well. So there we go. I think that was more difficult than the Uniseal. So now we just need to do these guys up. There we go, I think that's tight enough. We'll turn that off. And we'll wait for the filter to fill again. And now we need to get this little uh, makeshift biofilter out. Probably going to make the water a bit mucky because I dare take it. There's a bit of solids that's made it through. Probably should have taken it out first, I think. Just to give you a bit of a look down there. Just a tad murky at the moment. Sorry, fish. So now we've got water coming in here. It's time to do the internal plumbing. What I've got is a section of pipe with slits and holes drilled in it and an end cap with the same. And this is just going into a T that will fit on the outlet. So all those little slits will just stop any of the biomedia going out. And on the top there, I've just got um, another little grate. Uh, that'll stop a siphon from initiating, um, lets air in there, but also stops any biomedia. Um, from falling through if it does overflow. Now for the inlet, I've got pretty much all the same bit of kit, but just a shorter version with an end cap with no holes. And that is going in on a 45 degree angle. So there we go, folks. That's what the inside looks like without the media. All looks to be working okay. No drips or leaks over there, so pretty chuffed about that. I do need to put on just another 90 degree down there and send it a little bit closer to the um, top of the sump water, mainly because I don't want to make too much noise for the neighbors. Now I've had a bit of a dig through the media and it actually looks pretty clean. So what I'm thinking has happened, exactly the same as our old biofilter, a lot of those solids are just sitting right down the bottom there, below those, um, that last row of holes. So I think I'm going to be able to scoop out the majority of this without having to clean it. So I dare say I have about 50 litres worth of media in this drum here. So that should be just enough for this system normally. Um, but I want to um, steal a little bit of this because we've got a quarantine system on the go at the moment for some other fish that are coming into the system. So this will act as a biofilter over in that unit. So when it comes down to working out how much media you need, the moving bed bioreactor, uh, generally speaking, you don't want any more than two thirds of the total water volume to be the biomedia itself. Now I could just pour this in, but um, yeah, I have a feeling it's a bit mucky down the bottom there. And I really don't want that muck in the system if I can help it. So as I suspected down the bottom here, it's pretty murky, a lot of solid and crud down there. So I'm just gonna give these guys a bit of a rinse out with some water from the system. So all I'm gonna do is just give these a bit of a swish around strain them out and put them in the bucket. It's as easy as that. It's basically how I used to um, clean the biofilter in the old system, probably once or twice a year. Doesn't take that long. Easy bit of maintenance to do. This media here I might actually go and pop over in the quarantine system for the new fish. Looks like there'll be just enough. There's just a bit of a look had the um, solids that were sitting in the biomedia. Probably why it wasn't working very efficiently. So that's what it looks like with the media in there. Now all I need to do is just finish off that little um, drain attachment there. And then also get the air stones down there so we can provide some oxygen to those bacteria so they can do their thing. So I've finished the air component of the system. And what we have is a compressor that runs just the fish tank. And this compressor here runs the bio in the, uh, the aquaponic system and also the quarantine tank. 
This little air compressor is just running the um, dechlorinating tank there for the top up water. Very messy cabinet, I know. Now the airlines leave the cabinet up the back wall there and then go over the roof down or the floor basically to the deck upstairs and it comes in on the other side of the drum just down in there uh, this is a little fill port from when this was a wet pot reservoir i just decided to leave it on there now the media is churning nicely probably a little too ferociously i've got basically an oversized pump at the moment so i do need a smaller one to run this full time uh, probably about half the volume an hour is what i would need um, mainly because I'm also running it into um, this little tank over here and as you can see I've had to um, crimp this line so the uh, media in there doesn't churn too ferociously so there we go just a nice steady boil that's what it should be uh, more on this system in another clip so for the time being I think this media is running a little bit too fast but I don't really want to restrict the flow too much because I've damaged the compressor so I need to buy a slightly smaller one but overall I'm pretty happy with the way this little build's gone together. Uh, moving the, um, the radial flow filter over was the trickiest thing, mainly because I thought I might spring another leak here. But it looks like it's, um, yeah, no issue there, no wet spots down on the ground. And yeah, the pipe work coming out was easy enough to do. So all in all, pretty chuffed with the way it went together. So if you are new to my channel and aquaponics, I'll pop a playlist link down in the description. A little thumbnail will pop up at the end as well. Just going through my beginner's um, guide to aquaponics, runs through different system layout styles, also how to build some basic systems and components, and also gives you the fundamental what is aquaponics as well, and a basic run through on how the system works. So check that out if you're new to aquaponics. And if you, you know, enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you could hit that subscribe button down there and then pound on the bell icon once it appears. And fingers crossed, YouTube will send you notifications as soon as I upload a clip to the channel. I would like to thank you all for coming along and sussing out the clips. And special thanks, as always, really does need to go to those folks on the YouTube membership program and also the Farm Your Own Yard membership page. A uh, link will pop up at the end. Check it out if you want to know how you can support us further. Um, you know, you don't have to, but yeah, there's different ways you can support and not all of them involve money. So check it out. But I will pretty much well leave it there, folks. I do hope your aquaponics and your gardens are booming and I will catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. Have a top one.